Okay, good morning. We are those teachers who like to be co hosts so that we can be able to, to start off. Okay. Disconnect. Good morning, Mr. Baluka. Mm
Are you seeing this, Krishna? I use this question. I use this question. Mute and everybody loves to see. Mr. Baluka, I'm requesting that you give the students a bit of time to join. There was a confusion because of the new link. Yeah, we can start at exactly 11.20. Okay, thank you. Uh. So, Mr. Mbaluka, uh, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. So, th this link that I've used is a new... Uh, yeah, the, I sent the new link in the morning because there was uh, some error in the... When the link was being copied, there was some error, so it was not working much. So, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So the one that you are using, okay. I think I sent it in the morning around seven thirty, around the okay, eight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think now there is not that even in your ecosystem in Asia. Thank you. Yeah. You are here, Kufuata. I don't know where it was coming from. Uh, so the screen is shared well, is it okay? To go to the meeting controls, I'm going to I don't know. Host, co-host. Oh, your knees on. Okay, mute. Okay, good morning, good morning all. Good morning, students and the teachers. Good morning. Okay, uh, we are well. Of course, uh, there, is a bit, there was a little bit of some confusion of, uh, because the link, and I think uh, I sent the correct one. So uh, we'll also be able to send the, my team will also be able to send the correct, you can send them the, the, the link, the, the, the meeting ID, if there is a, one of your friend who is a, who is uh, confused so that they can join. We're giving them three minutes, then we start off. Then from there, because the meeting is recorded, uh, people can still be able to follow it up. They can follow it up later, even if they're going to be late. I think that's okay. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes. yes we can yes. see. Okay, good. Perfect. So three minutes, then we start off. All right.
And if your friend who is confused, you can send them the, the meeting ID on the screen and also the passcode, which is chemistry. So they can they'll be able to join from there. And I think uh, and the, the, the YouTube, the YouTube guys, I think you are, is being displayed well. Huh? So can record from that end, just record from my hand. I'm just able to record now. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, we are now starting the the session, so get ready so that we can uh, uh, start the the topic. Uh, today we are going to deal with the topical mapping of electrochemistry as requested yesterday by most of the students, and uh, today I'm going to be a little bit brief. There is some. Uh, there was uh, somebody who was in the in the cow shed when we were starting. So please, can you get out of the cow shed and uh, go to the house so that we don't listen to cows screaming every now and then? Um, because this is a serious adventure. Of course, uh, today I'm not going to be able to stay alone. But uh, as I said, uh, uh, make sure that you write whatever you expect from the comment section, and of course, uh, uh, follow follow whatever we are go I'm going to be uh, posting on the YouTube. I'll also be able to post some. Uh, some materials on the Twitter handle of Study Street, Study and Baluka. The, the YouTube is top notch online TV, so you can be able to get from there. Otherwise, uh, Karibu Sana for our today's, which I likely go to the final sessions. I've seen, seen people talk about uh, iron pack uh, periodic table. I think I've done that in the YouTube. Unless maybe I refine it, I'll try to refine that one. Uh, the topic of uh, salt also has been an area that. Uh, Many students are asking about it, uh, so please, uh, I'll also be able to see if I can get some time whereby I can be able to demystify uh, that particular topic. Those people have meant the course, please can you make sure that you maintain silence by muting everybody unless otherwise. Uh, we continue and uh, our topic of today, as promised from yesterday, is the topical mapping of electrochemistry. And I'm only going to focus on the main areas. So now, as I said, we can. So we want to look at electrochemistry. We are looking at the. We're going to unlock and uh, and and package the key concepts, and then also look at the common mistakes that students make. Uh, I first of all want to look at the examination content. You can write down the examination content for electrochemistry. They will be tested from the following three main components. So the exam content will be tested from the following area. And that is the first number one is redox. The redox reaction. The concept of redox is the one that is going to be tested a lot. So we have the redox number one number one is redox number one is redox number two on the same let me just use the whiteboard so we are saying number one is redox or redox number two is reduction potential reduction potential and number three 
is electrolysis. Those are the examinable contents under, under electrochem. We have redox, we have reduction potential, and then we have electrolysis. So under redox, the examiner will ask you about uh, identify the reducing agent, identify the oxidizing agent, uh, explain whether this uh, species has undergone oxidation or reduction, those kind of things. Then under reduction potential, is whereby we are talking about the electrochemical cell. Then we have electrolysis. So we'll be able to package these kind of things. I'll not be able to go through redox because redox, I, I expect, is a very simple thing. And most of you, you know it. Because of the, the, the time factor, as I said, we may not be able to tackle everything. But for redox students, I think that one, you don't have a lot of issues. Is that correct? Yes. Or maybe I can just give maybe one example and see how many students are able to. Can we get the oxidation number of chlorine in mm. this compound? Can we get the oxidation number of chlorine? Sorry. Can we get oxidation number of chlorine in the chlorate? Get the oxidation number of chlorine there. And also get the oxidation number of manganese in, in MnO2. So can we ask the answers for that very fast? In MnO2, it is four, positive four. Positive four. How have we arrived at that? We assume manganese is what? If we give it X plus the oxidation state of oxygen is always what? Negative two times two is equals to zero. And that becomes X minus four is equal to zero. So X automatically will be equal to four. So for chlor chlorine and chlorate, what will be the oxidation number there? Two. There's going to be what? Tevin, Tevin, can you be no more? That's good, good, Tevin. Can you be very, very no more so that we don't waste time with you? Let me disable the annotation. Yes. I just wanted to control that so that nobody is disturbing me again. So the chlorine, the chlorine in chlorate is what? Positive four. Seven. It is positive. Positive, huh? positive seven. Positive seven. Positive seven. Positive seven. <laughs> because, because this one now will be what? This will be X plus the oxygen state of oxygen is always negative two. There are four of them times four is equal to the overall charge of that radical, which is one. For this one, we are equating to zero because a normal element will have oxygen state of, of zero. So this one is negative one. Then you just relate X minus this and all those kind of things. And you can be able to, uh, to, to tell us or rather what has happened. Now, uh, you can be given a question like this. You can be given a question like this. Uh, normally, this let me tell you how you can be given a question. You can talk about like let's say ammonia plus oxygen is equals to N or two N two plus water. We balance the equation. Then you can be asked um, if ammonia has undergone oxidation or reduction, and of course in that kind of a scenario. In that kind of a scenario, when you're told to do like that, you need to, for example, if you focus on nitrogen. And you tell us now, in that kind of a scenario, in that kind of a scenario, you'll calculate the oxidation number of, of nitrogen in ammonia 
and the oxidation state of, of what? Oxygen state of nitrogen in nitrogen trope there. So can we get the oxygen state of nitrogen in ammonia? What will be the oxidation state of nitrogen in ammonia? Assume somebody tells you to uh, to confirm whether ammonia is a reducing agent or it is a, uh, the reducing or the oxidizing agent. Remember, a reducing agent loses electrons. That is one thing that you know. You need to understand that. I don't know whether students understand this. That an oxidizing agent, you can write that. Oxidizing agent is always the reduced species. While reducing, now that becomes the opposite. The reducing agent is always the oxidized species. There is always the oxidized species. And I think I can be, of course, I'll be able to give you a very simple question that you can be able to answer. But let me just show you. I want to just tell you how to answer the question. So that becomes a little bit easy. So can we confirm whether ammonia has undergone oxidation or reduction? Can we confirm? What is the oxidation state of uh, nitrogen in ammonia? Students? Negative three. Oh. Negative three. Negative three. Let me use a different, a different color for purposes of understanding. This one is negative three. And what is the oxidation state of, uh, of, 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 of nitrogen in nitrogen two oxide? Positive two. Sorry. Sorry, something has happened. So we had ammonia plus oxygen, and we are getting nitrogen two plus water. I don't need to balance, but of course, so we have said the oxidative state of, uh, of nitrogen here is negative three, and here it is positive two. So what has happened to the nitrogen? Has it undergone? Oxidation or reduction? So, no oxidation. Oxidation. Ammonia yes. has been oxidized because the oxidation number of nitrogen increases from negative three to positive two. Okay. Therefore, ammonia is what? It's reduction agent. Mm -hmm. Ammonia has undergone the, the nitrogen in ammonia has undergone oxidation. So is it the reducing agent or the oxidizing agent? Reducing agent. The reducing agent. But it has been oxidized. It has been oxidized, but it's the reducing agent. Look at something like this. Uh, we have hydrogen sulfide plus chlorine is equal to HCF plus sulfur. What has been oxidized and what has been reduced? Sulfur has been reduced. <laughs> okay. If the examiner tells you, relax, listen. If the examiner tells you, that's a very good answer, but wrong. To identify the reduced species or the oxidized species. You focus on the reagent. You cannot say hydrogen chloride is a reducing agent. You're only focusing on the, on the reactant because that is where the reaction takes place. So if you are told now to identify the reducing agent, you look at like here, what is the reducing agent? Or rather, what has been oxidized? That is where you start from. What has been oxidized? You start with hydrogen I sulfide. Yes. What is the oxidation yes. state of sulfur in hydrogen sulfide? Minus two. Negative two. Negative two. Uh, what the oxidation of, of sulfur in, in, in sulfur? Zero. 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 Therefore, for hydrogen, we cannot, because hydrogen remains the same, the oxidation state is positive, positive one, positive one on both ends. So you cannot focus on that. So I now use that sulfur has been what? Oxidized term are reduced. Hydrogen sulfide has been what? Has been oxidized has or been reduced? Oxidized. 
oxidized. Oxidized. It has been oxidized. Yeah. Therefore, because it has been oxidized, the what? The reducing or the oxidizing agent? Reducing, reducing agent. Reducing the reducing agent. agent. So automatically, chlorine will be the what? Chlorine here, of course, these are molecules. The oxidation state here is what? Is zero. Zero. But here, it's all, the but here is going to be what? Negative one. So that one has been has been reduced. 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 Therefore, it is the oxidizing agent. I, I don't know whether there is a student who is getting confused by saying hydrogen sulfide has been oxidized, but it is the reducing agent. Chlorine has been reduced, but it is the oxidizing agent. Is there a confusion? I explain. No. Sawa, we continue. So if that is okay. So always remember, if the examiner tells you, identify the reducing agent. Hapa, the answer will be, the reducing agent is hydrogen sulfide because the oxidation state of sulfur increases from, from negative two to zero. That is the answer. You have to tell us, this one changes from this to that. And I can see that everybody is saying we have no problem with that explanation. So we can. Somebody is saying, Paul Maina, that uh, we cannot, you cannot hear. Or that is not clear. Am I clear? Or oh, it is maybe somebody has a problem with their end. You are clear. clear. Yeah. yeah, so. I'm saying for those students who are going to find it, it's the issue of network on your end. We are recording this thing and we are going to upload it. So you'll still be able to follow it up and it's going to be very easy. So don't bother even if you don't get, of course, we are going to record it. For those people who have network challenges and who maybe uh, technical challenges in connecting the Zoom, also the audios in their gadgets. Uh, but uh, from the UPA Command Center, uh, as you have confirmed, uh, we are good. So we continue. We now focus on the most important thing. So mostly, normally in the chemistry that we're going to be dealing with, uh, normally the red oxidation, we talk about oxidation and reduction in terms of what? Electron transfer. Gain of electrons is reduction. <coughs> also, decrease in oxidation number is reduction. Therefore, we also have Loss of electrons is oxidation. A substance that loses electrons is a reducing agent. So now we go now to the second thing. And we I want to uh, start with the first thing, dealing with, um, dealing with the electrochemical cell. And I just want to explain us something very simple about half cell. When you have a metal rod, eh? Sorry. Progress. We have. I'm having a lot of problems here, but no problem. So we can just have, this is magnesium ribbon. This is magnesium metal being dipped into magnesium ion. Aqueous. This magnesium metal being dipped in magnesium. So we want to understand the concept of half cell. When a half, when a, when a what? When a metal rod is dipped into a solution of this ion, it goes into solution. When a metal rod is dipped into a solution of this ion, it goes into solution. And the metal rod will become the metal rod will become positive with respect to the solution. That's the only thing that you need to know. So the only reaction that occurred when a metal rod is dipped into a solution of this ion, we are going to have the metal rod, if it's magnesium, will dissolve, will go into solution forming, sorry, forming magnesium ions, appears. So that's the only reaction that I explained there. That when you, dip, when you dip a metal rod into a solution of either ion, it goes in solution. So when it goes in solution,
when it goes in solution, it leaves the electrons behind. So what we are saying is that the, the electrons are left behind. And when the electrons are left behind, now that rod becomes negative because there'll be increase in the number of magnesium ions than what was initially present in that solution. So if you now you get um, a, 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 a beaker, it just it initially before you dipped the metal rod, it add uh, maybe 20 magnesium ions. On dipping the magnesium rod, eh, more magnesium ions go into solution. So there is increase in the number of positive cations, or rather in the, in, the, in the number of positive ions in the solution. So the solution has more or rather as excess uh, cations than they were before. And therefore the electrons accumulate on the rod. So the rod becomes negative, the solution becomes positive. But that is not uh, very much important because that is not what exactly you need to understand more. So, but you just need to know that. When a metal rod is dipped into a solution of this ion, it goes in solution. So it is oxidized. Uh, you, the, whatever you can get from there is simply a half cell equation. I don't know. It's simply a half cell equation. So like if you have magnesium, if you're going to have magnesium, uh, being dipped in magnesium uh, or uh, solution, then you're going to have magnesium uh, dissolving to form magnesium ions plus two electrons. That is called a half cell equation. There is no potential that can be measured here. You cannot read anything. Even if you 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 put a galvanometer, a voltmeter on top of that rod, you're going to see nothing because the circuit is not complete. The circuit has to be complete for any deflection either in the in the voltmeter to be read, rather to generate any current. And that is why. Uh, there is a potential, but the potential cannot be read. You cannot be determined because the circuit is not complete. So for us to be able to read or rather to determine the electron potential that, uh, uh, generated by a particular cell, we have to join two half cells. So when you join, when you join two half cells, now you form an electrochemical cell. And simply to understand, an electrochemical cell is simply based on displacement reaction. It is based on redox. Remember, a displacement reaction involves that a more reactive element will displace a less reactive from a solution of all. Are we together, students? So the first thing that we want, we just need to know about electrochemical cell. It is based on displacement, whereby we are going to have two half cells made up of two metal rod dipped in their own solutions. In that kind of a scenario, the more reactive element will undergo oxidation, will dissolve to form the ions of that particular metal. But the less reactive metal will gain the electrons lost by the more reactive element. And the two half cells are joined using a sort bridge. So what have I said, which is very much important, simply to summarize the electrochemical cell, because Musha Soma. One, the electrochemical cell is based on displacement. Like, for example, let us assume we have magnesium and the copper. So which one is more reactive than the other? Magnesium. 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 So in that magnesium. kind of a scenario, we are going to have magnesium. Uh, we are going to have magnesium metal reacting with copper ions to form now the product here we are going to have magnesium magnesium ions plus copper solid so the magnesium has displaced the copper. So in that kind of a scenario, the magnesium, the magnesium will always will, will now undergo the magnesium has been oxidized because if oxidation number has changed, if oxidation number has changed from zero to positive two, so it has been oxidized, while copper has been reduced from positive two to zero. So these are concepts of displacement reaction. 
there is flow of electrons. Therefore, current flows. These, these lead to a flow of current and bringing about an electrochemical cell. So in this kind of a scenario, we are going to have a magnesium rod dipped in magnesium ions and a copper rod dipped in copper ions. So let's look at how it goes on. The concept of a the concept of an electrochemical cell. An electrochemical cell is formed between, we can have now an electrochemical cell formed between zinc dipped in zinc ions and the copper metal dipped in copper ions. Zinc being more reactive goes into solution, forming zinc ions, leaving the electrons behind while the solution becomes positive. Then the electrons flow from zinc into the copper rod on the other copper half cell. They gain electrons that are lost by zinc to form now copper metal. Let's look at this. So here we are having um, the electrochemical cell is simply formed between, between two half cells from two different metals. One metal is more reactive than the other. That is simple as that. That, for example, if here we have um, the zinc and the copper cell, we are going to have zinc half cell, zinc rod dipped in zinc ions. Like here you can see zinc being dissolved in zinc nitrate. We're going to have copper being formed, dissolved in copper nitrate. Then the two, the two now are joined using a salt bridge. The salt bridge is usually made up of sodium nitrate. So then there'll be a, a, a voltimeter reading. The voltimeter will be made on the voltimeter because a current is generated. So let's look at this. So we are going to have, for example, zinc. Then we have zinc ions. Then we have copper dipped in copper. And that's the only thing that you need to know in the normal examination setup. I know, of course, there are other things like, for example, somebody loves to say one molar copper ions, one molar zinc. But the most important thing, when you are drawing an electrochemical cell, you have to draw. If there are two half cells, we have copper rod, and then we have, let me just click. I have a question. Ask. Question. Yes, there's a question asked. Yes, um, uh, in our previous exam, we were asked if there's any other compound that can be used for the salt bridge apart from sodium nitrate. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can use potassium nitrate. Nitrate. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, it is be potassium nitrate and sodium nitrate. Then from there, we are having now the, the role, like the way they are given there. When in a normal examination setup, when you're drawing two half cells, we may pair two half cells. You a rod, the metal rod of one, dip in the other one. Just know the, 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 the charge of the ion, like copper in copper ions, zinc in copper ions, very easy. Then the salt bridge is made up of either potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate. Those are the main ones. You don't use any other because any other one will lead to formation of insoluble salt, which will lead to blockage of the salt bridge. Um, the other thing that is very much important, you need to you use a voltimeter, but you just draw, voltimeter just draw like uh, something like, sorry. Voltimeter, you can simply draw something like that, V, that is enough. You don't have to draw the, the way I've drawn the very beautiful diagram. So then from there, we are looking at the, the what? The reaction on the left, whereby we have the more reactive element, will always, the offset equations will be zinc goes in solution to form zinc ion plus two electrons. While on the other hand, the copper ions, get, remember, zinc gear goes into solution to form zinc ions, leaving two electrons by and so the electrons now flow from the zinc rod all the way to the copper rod. And now they are gained by the by the, the copper half cell. Rather, we are good. The copper ions from the copper half cell, they gain it to form copper. That is the issue. Then from there we can have, sorry, we can have the, the concept. Let me just show you how this thing can work. I want to show you 
a simple way. One, the more reactive element is the more reactive half cell is placed on the left. Just like the way you write, um, just the way you like the way you write sodium chloride. Sodium chloride has a higher tendency to, to do what? Uh, to, to lose electrons. So it is when you're writing sodium chloride, the one that easily loses electrons is placed on the left. The one that gains is placed on the right. So it's the same concept, just like in the even in the in the in the, in the periodic table. So the more reactive will be on the left. The less reactive will be on the right. Are we together? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Then nataka kuwapea njia ingine ya kufanya eneo ya kufanya kukujua the reaction how they go. Are you ready for that? Yes. Okay. I want to show you a trick yes. to know how to write the yes. the, the, the half cell equation for any particular cell. And it will never change. You remember the, the octopus always will come with a, a different methodology. So ukitaka kujua jia raisi ya kujua the half cell just use and the clockwise. Use and the clockwise method. Just use and the clockwise to get this. Once you have now drawn the cell, using the, 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 the superior powers, you can be able to know. Just know the, the equations take and the clockwise root. How? The equation that the half cell equation that takes place on the zinc half cell is zinc comes to zinc ions. The first half cell, just in the anticlockwise, zinc is converted to zinc ions. <coughs> on the other half cell, copper ions is converted to copper solid. Are you getting that point? Yes. yes. Uh, can I repeat? Yes. So I'm saying we are using the anticlockwise. From this thing, the way it is just drawn, we have zinc here, and at the half cell, we have zinc ion. So the reaction will be now, zinc solid goes to form zinc ion plus two electrons. On the other one, we are having copper ions gaining two electrons to form copper solid. Because you know, if you are saying copper is being converted to copper ions, how is it converted? We need electrons. Are you get the point? Yes. 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 Now, after understanding that, now you have not drawn, known how to draw uh, a, a what? A cell. So we now have the purpose of the sword bridge. Sword bridge will complete the circuit because if it's not present, the electrons cannot flow, hence no reading in the voltimeter. It they also maintain the balance of charges of both half cells. And remember, in an exam, the examiner can tell you to show on the diagram the flow of electrons. If you show the way I've shown, that will be wrong. That now will be that will be wrong. So, but now if you want to show the flow of electrons, this one is wrong. It can be well show on the diagram. But if you are told to show on the diagram, it must be on the diagram like that. So, and that is now the correct version. If you are told to show on the diagram, like that. That's how you show on the diagram. Yes, ask. What is the direction of the flow of the ions in the in the sort bridge? Uh, Your, sort bridge sorry. depends. <laughs> uh, let me just explain. What really happened is eh? you know in now, let's just show you. That now explain the second point that uh, it maintained the balance of charges. What happens here in the zinc half cell, the reaction that takes place is that the zinc is converted to zinc ions. So when zinc is converted to zinc ions, this half cell will have excess, will have excess what? Positive charges. So there will be addition of positive two because zinc has a charge of positive two. Tunaelewa, eh? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. Now, now what when that one happens, let me just explain. Eh? Let me use that later because yeah, they are uh, this is wrong. I just want to use something that is not correct. Uh, this is wrong. So, so now when now excess zinc ion to for every zinc ion which is formed, it leads to increase in positive two in this in this half cell. So what will happen 
This water bridge has both sodium ion and nitrate ion. So what will happen is for every zinc ion that is formed here, the salt bridge will release. The salt bridge will release two nitrate ions to come and neutralize the excess positive charges. Because remember, to neutralize a positive two, you require two, because nitrate has a charge of negative one, you require two nitrate ions, will be now, uh, will now flow to the other salt bridge to neutralize the excess positive charges. On the other hand, we are having consumption of what? Of copper ions. So the copper ions, for every copper ion that is now consumed, two sodium ions are pumped, are brought to the what? To this half cell to be able to need to, 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 to replace the excess positive, the, the positive charges that have been removed. Are we together? Yes. Yes. That's yes. exactly what the purpose of salt bridge. When you say it balance, it maintains the balance of charges. Pardon. I've said eh, in this side, when that's why you see nitrate coming to this side and, and, uh, and sodium coming to this side. So if now on this side we are having formation of excess positive charges. So how do you neutralize the excess positive charges? You're going to bring in negative charges, which now neutralize which allow you to light the excess positive charges. So for every positive charge, that for every zinc ion that is formed, the salt bridge will provide two nitrate ions to neuter, or rather to bring the state of balance so that, because the state of the number of positive charges should remain the same. So if there is formation of excess positive charges, the salt bridge will now release two, the negative charges to neutralize the positive charges. Now on the left, on the right, we're having the, the, the copper ions being converted to copper solid. So there is decrease in the positive charges. So what will happen now, the, the salt bridge now release positive ions to go and now replace those that have been consumed. That's why we talk about now, the salt bridge will now maintain a state, a balance of ions by providing ions to replace those that have been consumed and also to neutralize those that have been produced. That is the point of the source bridge. And I think that is clear now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we go to, we yes. go now to, this exactly, somebody can ask you to say the observation that are meant in the, in the, in the half cells. You know, like for example now, the, 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 the zinc half cell, in the zinc rod will reduce in mass. It will dissolve and reduce in mass. While the, on the copper half cell, it increases in mass. Remember, it is wrong to tell the examiner that there is a brown solid that is deposited on the copper rod because copper is already brown. Already brown. You cannot say a brown solid deposited there. So you say there is increase in the mass of copper rod. That's it. Then remember also on the copper half cell, there'll be the blue color of the solution fade. Will fade because now there is what? The copper ions are also being converted to copper solid. That is uh, the observation that, yes? I've said, look at this rod I'm showing you there. There's that, first of all, the copper, the copper, the, the zinc rod dissolves and decreases in mass. Are you getting the point? Because it dissolves. Yes. Uh, on the Copper rod, it will it will increase in mass. There is accumulation of a brown solid there. But because copper is brown, you don't tell us a brown solid is deposited. So you tell us now the mass of copper increases. The, the mass of copper rod. Number two, we also have we are converting copper ions to copper to copper what to copper solid. So meaning that copper is the, the copper ions are the one that give it the blue color. So the characteristic blue color of the solution on the copper half cell will fade. There is also deflection on the, there's also some reading is meant on the what? On the photometer. Some reading is meant, even you may not be able to remember it, but you can just say a reading is meant on the voltimeter. Sawa? Yes. 
Okay, good. The observation the zinc road dissolves increase mass, the copper rod increases in mass, there is deflation the voltimeter, blue color of the solution fed. Can you get the screenshot? Yes. Done. Good. Uh, now, I want now to show you now. This is the reaction, the half cell, this one you have already done, this is oxidation and this one is reduction. Let's look at the real thing. What's up? Why is the, this reaction not featuring like? Something is not happening here. Just wait, just wait, Kidogo. I'm trying to trust that that uh, that that. Let me use a different one. Are you seeing it? Yes. Are you seeing it now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're yeah. able to see. Yeah. So I, I was changing because they something had disappeared. So we have the zinc up cell and the copper up cell. We're having now the zinc bank. This one we have already done. So you can be able to see zinc has been oxidized and then. Uh, and 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 one day the copper has been reduced. That's now the overall equation. When you're told to write the overall redox equation for the cell is that, which is now the displacement reaction. The overall redox equation. The overall thing is that zinc has been converted to zinc ions, and the copper has been converted to copper ions. So zinc has undergone oxidation, and the copper has undergone reduction. So the the, the, the entire concept of electrochemical cell is based on the concept of redox or a displacement reaction whereby we are having a more reactive element and a less reactive element and i think that one is very clear can i proceed yes, yes. Mm? For, for your diagram yeah mm. the two half which one is the anode and which one is the carbon okay perfect that i think thank you very dangerous for that question because the is one of the issues that uh, many students you can see i've already captured it from my list so zinc is the what zinc is the anode and the copper is the cathode let me clear this one once and for all we don't define zinc is the negative rod but it's the anode copper is the positive rod but it's the cathode I know there are some confusion in some quotes that the negative is the cathode and the positive is the anode. That is correct with some students, isn't it? Eh? Yes. Hello. Yes. So, yes. so let me let let me clear this one and for all. We define the anode as the electrode where oxidation takes place. The anode is the electrode where oxidation takes place, while the cathode is the electrode where reduction takes place. So looking at the zinc rod, has it been oxidized or rather has oxidation takes place there or reduction? Oxidation. Oxidation. And the copper, oxidation. it is reduction. So, Zinc is the anode, while copper is the cathode. That's the universal definition of the anode and electrode. Note, anode is the positive, while cathode is the negative. You are just told those kind of things in Form 2 because you knew nothing about um, a redox in terms of electron transfer. So, But the, the real chemistry that defines electrodes is with the respect to where reduction and oxidation takes place. When you use that definition, it is going to be universal. It is still going to even apply to even the electrolytic cell. So, when you say molten lead bromide, 
the, the anion, which is the bromide, go to the anode, lose electrons. What is losing electrons in terms of reduction and oxidation? Is loss of electrons. When it go, bromide goes to the anode, loses electrons to form bromine gas. So has it been oxidized? Is that oxidation or reduction? Oxidation. oxidation. And if that is the anode, the cations, like the lead ions, will go to the cathode and does what? Gain electrons to form the corresponding metal. Again, that is reduction. So it doesn't matter whether it is electrochemical or electrolytic cell. An anode is the electrode where oxidation takes place, where reduction is the electrode where um, we are saying the cathode is the electrode where reduction takes place. The cathode, the anode is the electrode where oxidation takes place. The cathode is the electrode where reduction takes place. And that applies to any cell. Chemistry is factual. Chemistry is based on logic. It is based on empirical evidence available. And that is the correct chemistry. I think now I'm clear and nobody will get confused again. Yes, thank yes. you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. okay. Somebody has raised hand. Is there any issue? And uh, people like the, the, the guys monitoring the YouTube, let me see if there's a student asking any question from the YouTube uh, link. Uh, somebody has raised the hand. I don't know whether it's okay or somebody has an issue. Good. Now we have seen this is how you write the equation, the overall cell equation, in case the examiner is telling you that. Now we go to write the cell representation, the cell notation. These are like a short and. This is a short and. Eh? Uh, like you are writing, you are drawing the cell, but you are using a one line equation that is called a short and. Well, when I'm talking about short and equation, that's now you are representing the cell in a small equation. So this is how you draw it. The, the cell representation, rather cell notation. You put, the, just the way it is, eh? just remember this, let me take you to this cell. Eh? You want to write the cell representation. So what happens here is, normally from this one, we have, sorry, we have zinc, sorry. So this is the cell, in your cell, Sasa. So to cure now your cell, eh? Uh, to cure your cell, to cure your cell, we are having zinc. The real reaction that express zinc solid is converted to zinc aqueous with positive two. Then to represent the the boundary between the zinc rod and the zinc solution, you just use one stroke. Then between now, this is the first step. The other one is the salt bridge. The salt bridge is represented using uh, two sliding um, uh, double double lines. And then here on the other side, just the way I told you with the, with the what? With the, and the clock was, we are going to have the copper solid, uh, not copper solid, we have copper what? Students, we are having copper what? Ions. Ions. Gaining electron and forming what? Copper so? Copper. So then, yeah, so that's exactly what we expect from here. When you're writing this, uh, the cell representation, we are having the way I say zinc is dissolved in zinc rod. So zinc is converted to zinc ion. You write like that. You use one stroke to show the border face. Then you write two slanting lines to represent the salt bridge. Then you're going to have the copper ions gaining electrons to form copper watt solid. And of course, this one, if you are using that, you have to show uh, the electrode potential of that. To be able to remember, let me show you, how to remember the cathode, the anode, and how to go about it. Now, use this method. Eh? Okay. Use this method of a. Uh, don't know why this one is not working. Use the method of what you call 
the ABC. The ABC mnemonic of knowing how to go about that. Now, uh, the A stands for the anode. So the anode is always on the on the what? On the left, which consists of the, the most reactive element. So if you are told to identify the anode here, the anode will be zinc. Then B is the for the salt bridge. Nandio ye na na the double line. Then the cathode is always on the left. And again, remember what I said. You can also use the to identify where oxidation and reduction takes place. Remember, we know, we already know the anode is where the oxidation takes place. So on the left, you're going to have the more reactive element dissolving to form the ions of these ions. On the right, we are going to have the cations of the less reactive element gaining electrons to form this. And of course, remember these questions are there. So I'm saying use the ABC mnemonic to remember the anode on the I left. <coughs> The salt bridge in the Oyo Katikati is represented on a salt bridge. Now you have double lines. Then the cathode reaction is the half cell on the right where a uh, reduction takes place. Excuse me, Mr. Baluka. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, now that they have known um, oxidation takes place at the anode, yeah. they might also use that mnemonic of oil ridge. Yeah. Uh, where ox oil. Oil, O-I-L, means oxidation yeah. is loss of electron. Mm -hmm. And a ridge, R-I-G, means yeah. a reduction is gain of electron. So the species that is on the anode, it will always lose electron, while the species on the cathode will always gain electron. Yeah, that's the fact. And that is also, that normally used to, for those students who may get confused about uh, oxidation, especially when you're dealing with the redox, the, the first component of electrolysis or rather electro, electrochemistry, whereby some students get confused on um, oxidation reduction, whether that's whereby you use the oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons, yeah, a reduction yeah. is gain. Yeah, that, one, that mostly applies, uh, that I think I'm talking to, is it Richard? Yes, Richard. Yeah, yeah, I know. So that normally applies more in the in the redox in the in the in the in the initial stages uh, when we are teaching them about uh, uh, reduction and oxidation in terms of electron transfer. Although I thank you so much because the same thing we are saying the anode is where uh, oxidation occurs. So they should also remember that oxidation is lost, and the cathode is where reduction occurs. Where um, we are talking about reduction in gain of electrons. Thank you so much, Madam. Uh, when it's not writing the cell notation, always show the oxidation occurring in the first half cell. The single line represents the boundary phase where potential difference develops in a half cell. So the bridge is shown using a vertical broken line or a pair of slanted double line. Um, in you, including an inert electron, that is if you are going to use a, a possibly a gas uh, or maybe uh, uh, two, two, cation, two anions. Then include a potential of the soil. If the potential is positive, negative, or rather if the potential is negative, then the process occurring in the cell is reversed. Uh, that one will even confuse you more. I'll show you a different methodology for doing that. Voltaic or other electrochemical cell, by convention, a voltaic or other electrochemical cell is represented as following. We are going to have the M to M2 plants, uh, we have N to N solid, whereby the metal rod of M, or rather metal rod of M into a solution of M, or rather is the most reactive. So whatever you are saying, that way, I don't even have to explain this one because I've already finished with this. It, the more you are going to waste a lot of time uh, looking at that, the more they are going to, to confuse you. Just know the more reactive element is on the left, and the less reactive element is on the right. Students, let me ask you, let me ask you using this. If, for example, here you are given a, if here you are given lead and zinc, lead and zinc, what will be, uh, let, uh, let me see. You are given lead and zinc, and let me say this one is X. And this will be Y. So you are given lead and zinc. So what will be X and what will be Y? 
Elles sont visibles. X zinc Y lead. Student, do you understand why? What is more reactive between zinc and lead? Zinc. 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 The popular scientists can make a common zoo in low humid countryside where most students go. The mnemonic for reactivity. Muna yes. 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 Zinc is more reactive than lead. So zinc will be on the left, dissolved in zinc ions, aqueous. Then on the Y, we'll be going to have lead solid dissolved in lead ions, aqueous. So let's move on and let's go to something else. Uh, illustration for tonight for Excel, we're having that. An anode is fine. The LREX would wear, uh, this one is a repetition. So uh, we are going to have a question there. Uh, shown the diagram on uh, using an arrow, the direction of the flow of electrons. And as, of course, as you have been able to see from there, that is the correct way of showing that thing. That's the correct way of showing how uh, electron flow. We see and decay inja, we can decay inja to now pair zero. Two supplement that can be used to fill the part labeled L. Just give me very fast. Potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate. Good. Now let me go to reduction potential. Sodium nitrate. Let me go now to reduction potential. Now you need to use that one. We know we need to look at now what is the can you speak this for? It might be somebody money and a doctor do. Maybe to Nikoko class. The standard electron potential is defined as the potential difference between a cell comprising of a particular element with one molar solution of its ions and the standard hydrogen electron. So that's the definition of the standard electron potential. The other time it was asked and is not captured very well in the book. So that one just can short and go and try to. Uh, revise on that. That is simply a statement. In as much as even if I repeat 10 times, if you don't get time to repeat it, then you will not be able to get that. That's the correct definition of the standard electrode potential. It is the potential difference between a cell comprising of a particular element with, in contact with one molar solution of its ions and the standard hydrogen electrode. So, I want to now show you how to use the standard electrode because normally the examiner will be asking you questions based on that. So can you take a screenshot of that because we are going to be using this to explain. So when you're given, you're going to be finding these kind of questions. These are very common, normally in paper two. So I want to give you some things that you need to understand. One, the first thing when you're given that kind of a thing is, the most you are going to be as we start by can you write down identify the strongest reducing agent identify the strongest reducing agent stroke weakest oxidizing agent b identify identify the strongest oxidizing agent, which is also the weakest reducing agent. So I want to show you how to answer the questions on that. So to answer now, identify the strongest reducing agent is going to be what? Magnesium. Magnesium. Magnesium, magnesium solid. Magnesium solid or magnesium mm -hmm. ions? What are we going to call? Solid. 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 So the strongest reducing agent is magnesium. Just like that. I think I told you that's you in a touch. Now, to measure that while we are like for example, the reducing agent, you can use the mnemonic R or R.
R or R, that the reducing agent is always the species on the right. Whatever, if you are getting confused whether it's magnesium ions or it is magnesium solid, you use that mnemonic, R or R. Reducing agent is always on the right. So between magnesium ion and magnesium, which one is on the right? Magnesium. Magnesium. I'm telling you like this because these things are very common with students. To identify. to identify the stronger reducing agent, we go for the most negative. That is what? Most negative, the species on the right. To identify the stronger reducing agent, you go for the most positive, the species, the most negative, the species on the right. So automatically, the strongest oxidizing agent will be the what? The most what? Most positive. 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 And the species on there? Left. 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 Now, which is which is now going to be what? Chlorine gas. Chlorine gas. Perfect. Chlorine. Just write chlorine. You can take chlorine too. You can take chlorine. But as soon as you take chlorine ions, so it doesn't have to say chlorine gas. Just write chlorine. That's enough. Okay. What? I don't can take chlorine too. I'm saying a student may write just like sorry, but just write. I'm saying here you just write chlorine like that. Mungine atandika chlorine too. Both of them are correct. And you don't have to give the state symbol. Now assume the assume this one was not there. Assume chlorine was not there, sorry. Assume chlorine was not there. So assume that part was not there. Then you are told to identify the strongest oxidizing agent. It will be what? Copper. 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 Magnesium. Chlorine, magnesium. Chlorine, and magnesium. Chlorine and magnesium. And you pick the half cell. Una the half cell. Now the half cell. So you take chlorine and magnesium. That's now. You know you can also be taught. Pick two elements whose half cells will give you the highest EMF. So that would be chlorine and. Are you getting the difference? Yeah. Yes. Select two elements whose half cells will give you the highest EMF. The answer will be chlorine and magnesium. But when you're told to pick two offsets, now you just write this, the two of this. Easy na hi. You just copy. Okay, that's correct. Now, next is, I want to summarize this thing. Nataka kukata kidogo. So, wacha tuchukue hiyo. Assume umepewa nini kuna vitu zinakaa hivyo hizo. Hizo tu. Munaziona vile ziko, eh? Yes. Yes. To go to KZZ in a retanga tu ini ama mpili. Then the examiner tells you, select two half cells that will give you the least workable EMF. Itakuwa gani? Lead and hydrogen. Hydrogen and lead. Why? <laughs> They're the ones which are least. Okay. Least positive and least negative. Yeah, that one will work, but let me tell you, you don't pick the most positive and the least negative. It is wrong. Arrange those half cells in a setting order. 
pardon the question? You are told to get the two upsells that will give you the least workable EMF. But then first of all, do you know how to work the EMF, by the way? Because we need it to work with minus. it. Aja kwanza to calculate EMF due to kuja hapa, because now. First of all, you need, to, you, need to, you need to get this screenshot. We have already explained. Let me first of all calculate the EMF due to kuja hapa. If the other electrode are the higher, so this one is just something that you've already talked about. Um, the stronger reducing agent or the UK stocks dialing agent is the species with the highest negative electrode potential. Or rather, the least positive. Now, you the power of the go positive. So you'll pick the least positive uh, to be the strongest reducing agent. To my students, eh? it's not a matter that you're going to be given everything which is negative and positive. You can be given whereby everything is, is positive. So the least positive will be the stronger reducing agent. Okay, hydrogen is the reference electrode because it has a standard electrode potential of zero. I don't, you know, I've said I don't, that mm -hmm. you can be given half cells whereby uh, all of them are positive. So in that yeah. kind of a scenario, you cannot pick the most negative. You will pick the least, the, the, the least positive. The least positive will be now the, the strongest reducing agent. If you're given okay. all of them are negative and you're told to pick the strongest oxidizing agent, would you go again? Negative. All of them are negative and you are told to pick the strongest oxidizing agent. The, good the most the negative. The most negative. The most negative is the strongest reducing agent. But now we're talking about we want the strongest most oxidizing positive. agent. Most positive. The most positive. The least negative. The most negative. The most All the electrode potential are given, they are negative. And you have to the pick least. the strongest oxidizing agent. You're going to pick the what? The least, the least negative. negative. The strongest oxidizing agent, or the weakest reducing agent, are the highest positive potential, or rather the lowest negative potential. I think you are taking screenshot of those things. Huh? Yes. Okay. Now. We go, if you are told to select two offset, that will give you the ASTMF. You select the most positive and the least uh, negative, yeah? and the most negative. If told to draw a diagram of an electrochemical cell formed between two offsets, then the more negative will be oxidized and will be drawn on the left, while the more positive, least negative will be reduced and will be placed on the right. We are coming to that. So use of electro electron potential. We use it to determine the redox reaction can take place or not, to calculate the EMF of a cell consisting of any two metals, and to compare the reducing and the oxidizing power of elements. Those are the uses of the standard electrode potential. These are some of the questions that people come to you and they may talk about it. They start asking you, what are the uses of the standard electrode potential? They help us to know whether a reaction, a redox reaction can take place or not. They help us to be able to calculate the EMF of a cell and to compare the reducing and the oxidizing power. Because that's how we are saying, this is a stronger reducing agent, this is a weaker reducing agent, and all those kinds of things. Let's now go to a, a question like this. Use of a standard electrode potential to calculate the EMF of a cell. So we pair two offsets like that. So which one will be easier to draw? Which will be on the left and which will be on the right for zinc and uh, for, for, for copper? Zinc will be on the right. Zinc left will be on there. Zinc will be on the left. So will be on the right. So when now you are calculating the EMF, you pick the E of the reduced minus E of the oxidized. The one that is reduced is the more positive or the least negative. So if come for example, the copper and zinc, which will be reduced. Is it copper ama, ama, ama zinc? Copper. 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 If, copper. if you are given ma magnesium and zinc, which will be reduced and which will be oxidized? Magnesium will be oxidized. Magnesium will be? Oxidized. 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 Well, zinc will be reduced. Zinc. 
Mm. Bado yes. unaweza tumia hii. Ika hata kama ujui hizo vitu because sometimes they are going to be given A, B, C. You are going to be given letters. So for this one, the more negative means it is a stronger reducing ion. So it will be the more negative will be oxidized. The more positive, am I less negative will be reduced? Reduced. Mm. So now you are told to calculate. You get E of the reduced minus E of the oxidized. Ipo tu. Ama E, if you are given, listen students, unaweza pewa electrochemical cell, yenye hata ujui ni nini? Imechorwa tu. Imechorwa tu electrochemical cell. Bili. Ika joiniwa hapa hivi. That is the cell. Na ika joiniwa again hapa. But this side, kuna D. Kuna letter D. Na this side, kuna letter B. So what will be reduced and what will be oxidized here? Is it B or D? B will be oxidized while D will be reduced. Yeah, because that's what you say, always on the left, oxida oxidation takes place. So that's what we are saying, E on the right hand side. Eh? A right hand side, the, the, the reduced species. While on the left, the oxidation. So there are two ways. You can use E of the reduced are uh, all E minus E of the oxidized, or it can be E on the right hand side minus E on the left hand side. So let's look at this. So for this one, copper was reduced. So we get the E value, the electrode potential of copper, which was positive 0 0.34 minus, minus, because the zinc is negative. So it is minus, minus, which becomes positive. And you get the E value is positive that. So write the overall cell equation. This one we had already done. Write the overall <laughs> cell representation. We'll write the overall cell representation. It's written there. Any question? I think this one is very easy. No. Um, yes. 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 Question. Okay. Good. So from the equation above, copper is reduced. Is on the right hand side while thing is oxidized because it's on the left hand side. To calculate the EMF, of course, that one you have done and we have done that. So uh no, let's see. Let's stand. Let me see where is the animation. So again. I wanted you to calculate this, but now it's bad. Of course, I have not been able to get that, but it's okay. So, in that kind of a scenario, I think you're able, you're still be able to see the, the new. So, here we are having lead and silver. So, which one will be oxidized and which one will be reduced here? Lead, 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 lead oxidized oxidized and oxidized. silver will be reduced. Oxidized. Lead will be oxidized. Oxidized. Oxidized, oxidized because it's more neg negative and uh, uh, silver, silver will be what? Reduced. Reduced. So now in reduced. that kind of a scenario, you yes. calculate it like that. That is the issue. Now I wanted to tell you this. Eh? You know now when you write the, the overall equation for this one, when you write the overall equation for this one, we are going to have two silver. Silver is a one if you are supposed to. If we were to write the overall equation, lead plus two silver, positive one is equal to lead plus two silver like that. That is the overall equation because of balancing eh? in aqueous. So mm -hmm. I want you to I want you to warn you on this that even if you have told to write an equation like that the way I've written and I have written it. Excuse like me, that. sir. The product lead should be ion two positive. Huh? The product, product lead the should product. be two positive. Oh, product four lead. The product lead two ion. Oh yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry for that. Thank you. Ah. So the lead should be should be aqueous 
and should have a charge of positive too. So you see now, many students who want to put your same Tunaona silver ni mbili wakuja hapa waseme 2 into positive 0.8 it doesn't matter how many i want are there the 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 the, the standard electron potential is not affected by concentration or the quantity of ions it remains the same question yes. yes question yes is it for all the elements man ya Yeah, silver no, you see now, like for example, something when I find a kit to a reaction between something like aluminium, which is positive three, and uh, reacting with the sodium. So no, just as now we require two sodium to go with one aluminium. Send you. Yes. Well, we can still have magnesium and aluminium. Whether you're going to have magnesium are going to be three, and aluminium are going to be two. It doesn't matter. Just use the electron potential as it is. It is not affected by concentration. Neither is it affected by the charges. G, you know, you say because it remains the same. Even if you are using two charges, you are reacting magnesium and silver. You are reacting magnesium and sodium. You are reacting magnesium and aluminium. You are reacting magnesium and iron three. It remains the same. There is no multiplication. Do you understand? Yes. Are we together? Yes. Yes, yes, for those who have used yes. it before, I have yeah. also captured that one. Uh, that not the electron potential is independent of the number of electrons being transferred. So that right, that one is the point that yes. the electron potential is independent on the number of electrons being transferred. So what we say, uh, we can write this one for silver. I said the electron potential is independent of the number of electrons being transferred. Let me just uh, write something for you. Uh, allow me to. Allow me to. Let me just. Let me just show you. Can I do it practically? Yeah. Allow me yeah. to modify this yes. equation. Just give me one minute to write another equation for this. Okay. I'm trying to write an equation here. It's not working. Let me go to let me go to PowerPoint. Stop share. Let me go to PowerPoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Want to do a a real example? And to do a real example, that is a lot of things are happening here. Trying to get this one. Well, I'm good job. I got something that is not working. <coughs> yeah. So, what I'm saying is this huh? we can have a Are you seeing my screen? Yes. 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 So we can have another question here whereby we can have we can have silver. Sorry. We can have silver like this. We can have silver.
we can have silver ions plus two electrons is equal to silver, sorry. Is equal to silver solid. Two of them. You just make it two. So it doesn't matter. Still, the electron potential will still be positive 0 0.80. It doesn't matter whether you use, this one is really working very bad. So whatever I'm just saying is this, that you can have silver here. You can have silver. But now we are using two of them instead of using one. So because we are using two silver ions, they are going to require how many electrons? They are going to require two. two. So now, even if we do it like that, to form two silver, two silver solids, still the charge will still go to be positive zero. Zero. Uh, sorry. Will still go to be positive 0 0.8. Even if we put three, even if we put three silver ions, still this one remains the same. So whatever you're saying, even if now this one becomes two, uh, this one becomes two, and this one becomes two, the, the electric potential of this one will still remain the same. Are we together? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, now, so now, that is the point that is there. So now, now that we know how to calculate the EMF, let me just uh, give you two. Let me get a question from the octopus. Let me get a question from the octopus guru. Look at that question. Can you screenshot it? Munayona, by the way. Yes. yes. Yeah, just screenshot yes. it. Mm -hmm. For those who have used the Octopath Guru and the book four, that question there, I am just giving you one question, the Octopath, one question. That is going, mm -hmm. have you... Have you done that? First of all, the electrochemistry said we talk about redox reaction, reduction potential and electrolysis. I want to go to electrolysis, but before I go to there, there are some questions I want to answer. So can you, have you screenshot the first one? We, I move to the next one. Yes. 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 Good. Yes. So we have, what are you saying? Okay, sorry. So is it blocked? Am I Kosawa? So you can screenshot that other point, that other component now, screenshot it again. I've not gotten the other part. The same question. The same question. Yeah, it's the same the question. Same question. Yeah. It, you know, yes. you know that these are these are these are octopus question. That is now going to using the same methodology. You can answer every question on electrolysis. But I'm here. I'm here to, to take you through electrolysis. Mukosawa. Apana. Mukosawa. Aya. This is the same question. It's yeah, the same, same question. Let's get over. Those page what? This one. So now that you have you have screenshotted the question. Yes. 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 The question is still the same. Yeah, it's the yes. same. I was just giving. I was just giving you the one octopus, but you were you were supposed to pick uh, everything that you need from there. Okay. So now I want us to uh, uh, look at a few questions from that end, and we answer it. So can we try to answer question number? 
I think but let's look at now from that question. Can you can you which which element like we having that now? What is this now? A lot of confusion from that. Trying to get the question. So from that question that you have screenshotted, which is the strongest reducing agent? Which is the stronger reducing agent? No. It is what? Lad. At the night. Which question? They are not screenshotted. The screen is only yeah. showing the assignment. Yeah. We are not seeing that question. We are not. You are not seeing. Oh, oh you are not seeing the question from the guru. Now, Lisa, what are you seeing on your screen now? Cell representation. Sorry, you was sharing the wrong thing. Then, are you seeing this now? No. Yes. yes. What are you saying? Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, you are seeing. Can you screenshot that question? Zoom a little bit clearly. Huh? Zoom it yourself. Zoom in the question. Mayona? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Watch any watch any pandisha. Just disappeared again. Um, are you able to get that one? I'm a potato. What are you seeing in the screen? There's a lot of. Uh, I can only see very little things, and as you know, can you know, no, 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 Yes, relax. I'll, I'll, I'm doing it for you. You're almost there. Yes, we are there. Hmm? His computer has issues. He, wherever his boom, it disappears. Okay. That's good. Is it okay now? I like him on As it clear? As you are turning into dog. You mean dog too? Excuse me, everyone, to zoom you on their zoom. screen. Excuse I'm me, zoom. screen on, zoom on your I'm screen, zoom. not Mr. Baluka. Yeah. Not Mr. Baluka. We can we see now. The learners. Yes. The learners can, can zoom. zoom. Yes, we can zoom. Not Mr. Uh, Baluka, uh, but the learners. No, no, I've, I've, I've made okay, it better. You. I've made it better. Yeah. So now, can we analyze that question now? Yes. Yes. I'll still give you, I'm going to give you the scheme, just in case we don't have enough time. Eh? Hmm? Hmm. 
the, the question is now is okay, they have picked it. And whatever is happening, I want to give them the answer so that just in case, just in case we'll not be able to answer the question. The last one. I want to give you the, the screenshot of the answer so that it becomes very easy for you to, to do the Don't worry, I'm still going to get you there. Okay. Okay, that's the answers. Can you take a screenshot? Pole pole too. Have you taken that first part so that you can do the other one? Hello? Am go, I muted? Go on, go on, Not yet. Yes. You have taken? Yes. Yes. So that's enough. So, uh -huh. the recording in practice. Yes. It's one question, but it has so many marks. Eh? It may see up, I guess. Now, let me try to uh, navigate through that question. Let's look at the question now. Let's look at the question briefly. Let's look at the question briefly uh, from what is captured from that. And I just want to show you how to answer a few questions that can be asked. So like this one, there is a question that I'm asking you to pick the element, two elements that gives you the lowest EMF. So can you give, pick them from there? Yeah, the lowest GMS from that end. I want to put it in my screen. Eh? M and J. So I have a question? Yeah. Um, in the volts, when it is yeah. zero point zero zero, do you consider that as a positive or the negative? Zero zero is no. It's just the way it is. Zero zero is no negative or positive. So you it's can't just classify it as a oxidizing it's, or a reducing. It is still, you know, just the way you are saying. Even if you are yeah. putting, for example, you have all positive. So the least positive is is zero. Now you get the point. Eh? Yes. Just the way you draw a number line, zero you go up, that is the point that you're doing that. So here, the just very quick, eh? the stronger oxidizing angle is, is what? The stronger, the strongest I've 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 brought now the 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 the, the cell here, the the half cell uh uh or rather the, the half cell is here, the table for the half cell is here. So which one is the strongest oxidizing angle here? G. 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 G positive ama G I want. G. G ions. G ions. G ions. G ions. G ions. Because they say that the, the oxidizing agent is always on the, on the what? On the left. The stronger reducing agent there will be what? Hmm? N. Yeah? 
N. 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 Okay. Now we pick two half cells that give you the lowest DMS. J and M. M and J. M and J. Okay. Let me show you. Here, you list those ions. You list these things according to their... Uh, sorry. Let me try what about to reduce it. Hmm. So we, uh, we arrange them in ascending or descending order. Let's arrange them from descending to ascending. So we have we have the lowest we can have from what? Positive 0 0.8, sorry. What does it mean? We can have positive 0 0.8. The, we are here. So the first one is 0 0.8 from this descending order. So let's start from there. So we have, just write them down. We have positive, positive 0 0.8, then followed by positive 0. Point, oh, sorry, 0. Point what? We have positive 0. 0.52, 52. Follow to then talk of from the most positive, the most negative. Then from here, this one is followed by what? Zero, zero. zero, zero. Then followed by? Negative 0. 0.44. Negative 0. Negative 0. 0.44. <laughs> And there's a negative there. Then we have finally negative what? 2.92. 2.92. 2. 2. In that kind of scenario, we want to get the EMF. So to Kichukua and Billy, just pick any two. Normally, you know, the most positive is always the reduced, the one that is the, that is reduced. So we'll start the first two officers that are very close to each other. Is this minus this? So can you get that one? What do you get? These two, what are you getting when you subtract? When you subtract, what do you get? We start with the first two. What are you getting? Positive zero point. You remember this one is negative Three. positive zero point eight minus zero point five two. What are you getting in the answer? Zero point two eight. Positive, senior. Mm. Uh, next, zero point five two minus zero point zero zero. You get again positive zero point five two, senior. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah. Then from there we go to what? Zero point zero minus minus zero point four four. What are you getting? Positive zero point four four. Ah. So you get that akuna aja ku subtract because we know we are going to get a very large number. So you quickly negative zero point four four minus minus. So which one is giving you the lowest? Which one is giving you the lowest DMF? M and K. 0 0.28 and 0. 0 0.28, which is now becomes 0 0.8 and 0 0.52, which is now J and G. No, no, I'm doing it. That is now the point. <laughs> so normally these things are just, the Neletrango drew, they are just five. Just arrange them. From the most positive, the most negative. Then you end up with Anisha. It will just require less than two minutes that you're going to be through with that question. Have you got it right? Mm. Yes. I have a okay. question. Yes. Um, the zero, 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 
is it an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent mm. standard electrode paper is electrode uh uh what always asking the question you are who <laughs> That's the yeah, yeah. It, you know, you always talk about whether something is depending on, depending on you are comparing it with what. K, which has zero zero, has a stronger oxidizing power. It is a stronger uh, reducing engine than 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 what than uh, G. Comparing now, assuming for example, assuming you only add this. Your name Lillian. is what? Lillian. Assume now, Lillian, tulikuwa tuna hizo vitu tatu hapo. Now pick the strongest um the, the, the strongest what? The strong uh, you have to strike kuchukua hiyo. Let me pick something else because that one will be like let's pick now something like that one up to there. So which is the strongest reducing agent there? G. G, sorry. Yeah, G. The strongest reducing agent. K. G. K. Oh, sorry, K, K, K. Muna changa jiki waaje. The strongest reducing agent is the most negative or the least, po the least positive. Are we together? Yes. To the same, the strongest reducing agent is the most negative or the least positive. Positive. Are we together? Positive. So here, everything here is positive. Yes. But which one is the least positive here? K. J. K. So is it K? I'm a K. I J. It is what? K. It is K. To listen, my reducing agent is always K. on the right. To know eh? Reducing agent is always on the right. So Uktazipanga to like the most positive the G. So G will be the strongest oxidizing agent. But in terms of the stronger reducing agent, comparing with J, K, and G, the one that is the one that is least positive, it is K. Are we together, Lilian? Yes. So it depends on you're comparing it with what. But now when you compare K with N. So which one is the stronger reducing agent between K and M? M. N. Okay, perfect. N. I think now that one is clear. Now let me go to let me go to electrolysis. I want to give you a summary of electrolysis very fast. Trend for electrolysis. Listen. Summary of electrolysis. You can write. Summary of electrolysis. So we start with during electrolysis of aqueous solution. I know nobody has issues with the, how to electrolyze lead. Normally they'll tell you if it is molten lead bromide, and the cathode, the cations will go to the cathode, while anions go to the anode. I think that one, there's nobody with much issues. So when you're going to draw a setup for, for electrolysis of molten uh, lead bromide, you know how to do, go about that, eh? So yes. you just draw, yeah, you just draw something like that. Then you have the, the lead bromide, the molten. Then you need to have a what? You need to have a it, a source of it. Then that's all. That is the electrolyte. Then you're going to have the, let me see. You need that. You need the, you need the rod. Eh? I don't know why, why things are not working very well. You need the rod. You just need two rods. Don't don't confuse the electrolytic and the electrochemical cell. Then you join the two half cells like that. We are having the hano there. Then we are having the short one. The short thick. Then you are joining it. Then you're going to have the solution that we are talking about. You can use it like that. Then you can label it. Then you're going to have a source of it. Always make sure that there's a source of it because if there is no it, 
the electron the, the electrolyte will not remain uh, molten and therefore you'll not be able to score then you can tell us now this is molten lead true bromide this is molten molten whatever whether it is molten lead to bromide or latent molten lead to iodide. So you just need to draw that kind of a scenario. You're able to draw that kind of a thing, then you're able to release it from that end. It's very much important for you to be able to, uh, to understand that kind of a scenario. So the first thing is molten. Molten, you just need to draw, whether it's a beaker, you are putting it cell, then you're going to have to rot. You can say graphite, you can say graphite anode on the left and a graphite cathode on the right. Then you're going to put now the, the dry cell there. Then from there, you dip the electrolyte, you dip the rod, the electrolyte, then you show a, a, a source of it. Then you are good to go. And that is how you draw that. Now let's go to aqueous solution. Aqueous solution is whereby we have issues. That during electrolysis of aqueous solution, just write, just listen, then you, you take a screenshot. During electrolysis of aqueous solution, I'm giving you a shortcut of how to summarize this one. In the cathode, we always go to produce copper or hydrogen gas. We always go to produce copper mm. or hydrogen gas. In the cathode, always, for electrolysis of aqueous sulfuric acid, aqueous magnesium sulfate, aqueous, uh, we have sodium chloride, conk and dilute, we have even sodium sulfate. Always the, the product of the cathode is going to be hydrogen gas, which means the equation that is going to take place is this equation. Then we are only going to produce copper when we are using copper sulfate. So you can now list all the electrolytes you know that are in the book. Magnesium sulfate, sodium chloride, both dilute and concentrated, uh, sulfuric acid, and even all of them, the product, the equation, the cathode will be this one. And the product will be this. The only other equation will be copper ions gaining electrons to, to form copper metal, which only happens when you're using copper sulfate. Does that one make your work easy? Yes, but yes. I am. Yes, Excuse me, please pardon. I'm saying, eh? Pardon. Unaona zile aqueous solution mmefanya shule. Mmefanya gani? Magnesium sulfate. What else? Sulfuric acid. Sodium chloride dilute. Or yes. concentrated. All those ones, the product of the cathode is just going to be this one. We are only going to have hydrogen ions gaining electrons to form hydrogen gas. I'm giving you the solution, a shortcut, instead of now cramming all things like nature of electrons, concentration, and all those kind of things. So I'm saying the product of the cathode is just going to be either copper metal or hydrogen gas. And we are only going to produce copper when we are using copper sulfate. So for all the others, the product of the cathode will be hydrogen, and the equation will be the one that I've written there. Have you got it right? Yes, I have a question. Yes. Yes, Lisa. Uh, when you're told to explain why it is like hydrogen gas produced there, what do you say? Of course, uh, they, the, what you call a preferential discharge, that one will come to that because now that one, because like, for example, hydrogen is preferential discharge because of what? Because it can be mostly, uh, it is what? It is lower in the electrochemical series. That's the answer that you give. But I'm just showing you because mostly the examiner will be telling you like, why do we have to uh, to, to or rather to write the equation that occurred the cathode, identify the gas and all those kind of things. So now we have now the issues like now, when you're having magnesium sulfate, when you're having sodium chloride, the, we preferentially discharge hydrogen because it is lower in the electrochemical series. Sawa? Yes, thank you. Anode, we are, anode up and you kuna gazi. We can have the product being chlorine, eh? or oxygen gas. But to the worst copper ions in your water, if it is brought in the exam, they are going to see dust particles. We only produce chlorine when we are using concentrated sodium chloride due to its high concentration. Because the sodium chloride is highly concentrated, so chloride is preferentially discharged 
due to its high concentration. We produce copper ions when electrolyzing copper using copper electrodes. So always the main equation at the anode will always be 4H to produce two moles of water plus oxygen gas. So in most of all the others, except when you're using concentrated sodium chloride or copper sulfate using copper electrodes, for all the others, which means magnesium sulfate, sulfuric acid, dilute sodium chloride, and even copper sulfate, as long as we are not using uh, copper electrodes, the, 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 the product of the cathode will be oxygen, and the equation is this one. So in that kind of a scenario, can you master how to get this equation? You can just write your own summary. Like we produce, we have this equation, you can just write it somewhere. We have this equation, rather we produce hydrogen when we are using magnesium sulfate, sulfuric acid, sodium chloride dilute and concentrated. All those four, they give you this equation and they give you this product. For this one, for production of oxygen, we get it when we are electrolyzing magnesium sulfate, sulfuric acid, dilute sodium chloride, and aqueous copper sulfate, the product, the cathode, the anode in EO. But this one, the copper using copper electrons, many students are likely going to lose it. The product at the anode, when you are electrolyzing copper, using copper electrons is copper ions. Then, again, another way of summarizing. The electrolysis of magnesium sulfate, sulfuric acid, and sodium chloride as the same product at both the cathode and the anode. So you don't need to scram all of them. At the G. Leonasoma, electrolysis of magnesium sulfate, Kesho, electrolysis sodium chloride dilute, electrolysis of sulfuric acid, they are the same. The product of the cathode and the anode is this one. And I think... That just one page has helped you to summarize at least everything about electrolysis of aqueous solution as per the syllabus. Are you getting it right, students? Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. Perfect. So look at this. Yes. There's also this one, Angalia. So this one is also the same. You have seen this kind of equation. Whereby you're given this, let me give you the other one. Okay, this one. So whereby you're given either a test tube or a pair of balloon or a syringe. Then you are told the equations are the same, but don't balance the equation. This one is just showing you why one side produces two moles, why the other one produces one mole. Because to produce one mole of oxygen, you require four electrons. But the same electrons will produce two moles of hydrogen. Be, remember, during electrolysis, we part the same uh, content of electric current. So if you put the same content of electric current, the product at the anode will be twice, the, the product of the cathode will be twice that at the anode. And then the examiner will ask you about the concentration. Remember, we are removing hydrogen and hydroxide. These are the ones that form water. So the concentration will increase because electrolysis of both magnesium sulfate, sulfuric acid, and dilute sodium chloride involves removal of both hydrogen and hydroxide ion, which form water. Have you got it right? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yes. I did no. the same thing. Now, Excuse let me, me now. Yes, yes. Kuna swali nataka kuuliza. Yes. Maybe for, for clearance. Mm, yeah. When you are carrying out electrolysis of copper two nitrate, copper two chloride, yes, the, the cathode is copper being deposited or hydrogen. What, what are you saying? Electrolysis of copper. You have said that copper will only be deposited if you are using only copper two sulfate. Yeah. Mm, if you are using copper two nitrate, if you are using copper two chloride. The aqueous one. You know, <laughs> my, my limit drill the same thing. You know, when you're using an aqueous solution, copper is below hydrogen in the reactivity cells. And because copper is below hydrogen, when you're having any aqueous solution, it is going to contain hydrogen at the cation, and the other one will be copper. So any wherever you are using any solution of copper, 
the product, the cathode, will be copper. But remember, we are teaching the syllabus. Just look at the the the, the chemistry that is tested. We have the 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 the, the solution that we are supposed to teach, and that's the likes of um, uh, copper sulfate. Uh, copper, uh, we have copper sulfate, we have magnesium sulfate, we have sodium chloride. But the way you're asking is very correct. An examiner can replace uh, copper sulfate using copper chloride. And it's important for students to know, whatever you're going to use, any any solution, any sort of copper, the product at the cathode will be copper. We can also substitute sodium chloride with sodium sulfate. So students just know that even if you're using sodium sulfate, Still, the product at the at the what at the cathode again still going to be a hydrogen gas because now you see uh, unless you are using a sort of copper, then the product the cathode will be hydrogen. If you are using copper or silver, the product the cathode will be uh, copper metal or uh, silver metal. And I think uh, Mr. Muleva is clear about that. Yes. Okay. So remember, let the students all remember the concept of. Uh, the nature of electro, you can take a screenshot. That's a summary of uh, when you're using copper, using copper electrodes, and uh, also when you're using now uh, graphite electrodes. When you're using graphite electrodes, as you can be able to see, uh, using carbon electrons, the cathode copper will be disposed, uh, but now the anode I, I, oxygen gas will be produced, rather hydroxide ions are preferentially discharged. But when you're using uh, uh, active electrode like copper, they still the product, the cathode remains the same. And that's how you need to summarize it. The product of the cathode does not affected, is not affected by the nature of the electrodes. But now the anode, the copper ion, the copper, ion, the copper solid dissolves to form copper ions. And that is why the blue color of the electrodes remains the same when you're using copper electrodes. Then finally, we have this question. Calculation involving Faraday's. Can you take a screenshot of that? Just summarize this formula. If you are poor in understanding anything about um, calculation involving Faraday's, use this formula. You'll be able to get all the marks without, without knowing anything. Let me, there's a correction. Let me. There's a small correction. So. There's a small correction there. So you can be able to see. If you are given calculation that is involving a paradise, you use this formula. M stands for what, student? What does M stand for? Mass. Mass. If, for example, you are taught a particular mass, because you're going to be given a question, you'll be given the mass deposited. Or volume. Volume is for what? Gases. 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 Then we have Q. Q is equal to I times T. Current in numbers times time in seconds. Then you multiply times the relative atomic mass of the element. This one, if you're talking about mass, you're going to talk about relative atomic mass of the elements. If you're talking about volume of a gas, you're going to talk about molar gas volume. And all these ones are going to be given. Divided by N. N is the number of electrons required to, uh, to form one mole, to produce, to, to, to deposit or liberate one mole of a gas or one mole of an element, which is always equivalent to the charge, mostly for elements. F is Faraday's. Meshika. Yes. 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 Mm. Then now, when you're given any question, just substitute. To Angalia Swalikama, he Where is that question? No. There was a question that I had. Oh, do you? Not stay from. Let me see. Uh, there was a question here. Okay, let me just take it. Look at uh, uh, the, the, the question that uh, we have given, the last part, the last uh, second question from the bottom. You'll be able to get it from there. 
So what 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 are you seeing? The shared what is being shared on the screen? What is being shared on the screen? By the way, one point eight. Mm -hmm. It has gone. Ah. No question. No question yet. Okay. Good. So now, that the question now. Mm. That we I want to show the shortcut of getting there. That is the question now. So during purification of copper by electrolysis, 1.48 grams of copper were deposited when a current was passed through aqueous copper to sulfate for two and a half hours. To create the current in ampere. So let's now substitute. Are we given the M or we are given the, the V? Are we given the M or the V? We are given the what? The M. The M. Which is 1.48 is equal to U. We are supposed to get current in amperes times time. Do you have the current? That is what is being asked. Do you have the current? No. Isn't it? Yes. But so you say I times time. Time is what? What is the time for this one? Time is two. Two and a half hours. That has become the 2.5 times 60 times 60. 2.5 times, because these are hours, to convert to seconds, you have to get 2.5 times 60 times 60, then times the RIM, which we are already given the RIM is 63.5. Then divide by, what is the charge of, of copper? Two. And then times 95, Two. 600. So let's get to this. So, we are having this, there is something that is not captured there. So we are going to have yeah. 2.5 times that 600. So this is now the, the final thing. So just substitute, you are given the mass. Times, you, M is equal to Q, Q, Q is I times the times uh times what time time must be in seconds so that is 2.5 times that 600 because that is 60 times 60 times the array i have not given that times the relative atomic mass of that element then divided by n for copper 2 sulfate you already given the leakage there copper 2 sulfate so the n the charge is 2 times the faraday so now what you do like these students let one me show you how to get the marks now what you do like this, once you have already done like that, there's no thinking that you have done. Once you have done that, the examiner already has already given you, out of the three marks that are normally given you that, you already have how many marks? Two and, and a half, half marks. marks. Two and a half marks. Does it make scoring easy? You just need to cram that formula. So even if you remember, it is very easy if you are told to calculate the mass. But when the examiner gives you the mass and is required you to calculate the time or to calculate the current numbers, then it becomes a little bit difficult. So for easier calculation, if you're finding challenges in this kind of things, at Afadali, just apply the formula and uh, you can use this method. It's going to be very easy. Because you see, we are just substituted. <laughs> Assume we don't even know anything, but by just substituting, you already have <coughs> half marks. So the only marks that we are waiting for is the half a mark for the final answer. Then finally, if this one was a gas, what is N for hydrogen gas? It is what? Hydrogen gas, two. if you are told to calculate two. N, it's going to be what? Two. two. It is going to be two and not one. Many yes. students look at hydrogen like it gains one electron. Just remember that. I just, just, I just want to give you a, a summary that you cannot forget. For gases, N is always two, except oxygen, where N is four. For gases, N is always going to be two, except for oxygen, where N is four. If or two, and that's all. It becomes very easy for that. And uh, Why is N four? Because for you see now... Go to the, the formula of calculating oxygen to get to prepare oxygen. To prepare oxygen, 
sorry. To, 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 to form oxygen gas, which is O2, you require two, what? Two oxide ions. So each oxide ion to be converted to oxygen atom, you require two electrons. So to form two atoms of oxygen, you require four electrons. Are we together? Yes. Although yeah. refer to this equation, Angalia equation, to just form one mole of oxygen gas, you require four hydroxide ions, which requires four electrons. For the other gas is hydrogen. To produce one mole of hydrogen, you require two electrons. For chlorine, the same. So that is why it has to be like that. And I think that is very clear for you. And allow me to stop at this point. Yes. And there are some students who have written some questions, and we need to understand that kind of a scenario. So um, uh, this is the last meeting. I don't think that I'll be able to have another meeting. Maybe if there's something else, you can write in the comment section, and maybe I can record and upload it in the YouTube. Uh, thank you so much for gracing this uh, uh, Zoom meeting. I want to believe that you have uh, uh, you have gained from that. Uh, as I said, for those who don't have the guru, make sure that you utilize this, that one. Just look at the first question in every topic. I've given you the octopath way of doing it and uh, keep it, uh, continue uh, following up from the YouTube and also go and revise your notes. Uh, I think you have gained something from the little uh, that we have been able uh, to get. Uh, possibly we are not going to meet again. Possibly Thank we are going to meet when you are going to be in the university. So I take this opportunity to wish you all the best in your case, uh, Go and prepare with the things that you have done. I think they're going to be useful to you. And you've gained you. something for yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody with a question? Yes. You. Yeah, Uliza, you when can you're ask. Right, when you're when you're talking about let me write about the I have connect using platinum in yeah. things to do in non metals the equation yeah. for writing as that that is it the yes when we are connecting platinum with so the only thing that you need to know if you are using a gas if you are unique using a gas and you're using the 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 the, the if you're using a gas or ions, ions, like you can have iron two, they could battle iron three. Remember the rod you're going to put there will be platinum rod. Eh? But I'll be able to, let me just try to get it, write it properly and then prepare a small concession, uh, like of even 10 minutes of dealing with that, then I can write it properly. I'll post it before, uh, possibly the end of the day or by tomorrow. Mr. Mbaluka. Oh, okay, yes. thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Indeed, a notion of chemistry. Uh, students and teachers here are happy of you. More help. Yes, we are grateful. Thank you. I'm very much humbled for that. Of course, it was a, a sacrifice for me too. I was only supposed to have one session, but uh, you requested I do more. So that's why I had to prepare the two of them. Uh, I think Thank I'll you for your commitment. Too. Thank so you so much. You'll you. just write in the comment Thank section so of the much. topic that you are, whatever you want us to do, then we'll be able to see eh? what I can do. Energy hey. changes? Hey. Energy changes? Only... Yes, I'll Energy try, changes? Say... Okay. Energy, Thank you. Energy changes? Energy changes? Energy changes? Energy changes? Energy changes? It, okay, it, is, uh, it is struggling so many students, so uh, I think uh, you can also, you know, you are helping Kenyan students, uh, candidates, eh? so it will be yeah. beneficial to them, I think so. Okay. And this also is in touch a bit on radioactivity. <laughs> okay, a bit thank of you. Radioactivity. So, so I know that, like, for example, you have my, whatever I'll be able to post, even though that student was uh, talked about the, the the representation of the the, the 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 what the platinum so i'll be able to see what i can be able to do otherwise thank you so much have a okay. lovely and magnetic afternoon thank you yes sir before you go yeah uh you're welcome at modal girls which i would love to have also a session with you in our school i'm a student <laughs> where are you <laughs> i invite you to modal girls <laughs> No, Mudele, I'll come. I'll be coming. My name is there. I, I, I'll always, I always come to that school, of course. So I'll come. Yes, we'll be waiting for you. Personally, I'll be waiting for you. Okay, thank you. And uh, all the best. Thank you. If you have anything that is uh, 
that is tabbing. You make sure that you post it. You can follow me on Twitter. You can ask the question there. I'll be able to write. I can write down and and of course, of course, post it there. I'll also prepare a short clip that I can be able to put in uh, okay. Twitter or possibly in the in the YouTube. Thank you so much. I think unless somebody has a funny question. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, thank you so much.